Gallaudet University is the world's only liberal arts school for the deaf and hard of hearing. Gallaudet has a long history of Shakespeare in American Sign Language, ASL. Students and faculty have been performing Shakespeare's plays since 1884. But deaf-blind members of the community have had limited access to this rich, dramatic tradition. In 2016, Gallaudet English professor Jill Bradbury received a grant from the National Endowment for the Arts to organize a one-week workshop exploring theater practices for the deaf-blind. In summer 2018, six deafblind individuals came together to adapt Romeo and Juliet using the emerging language of the deafblind, protactyl. The workshop took place in Seattle, home of the protactyl movement. Back in 2015, I started an email conversation with John Lee Clark. We were writing back and forth. He had just published an article in an online magazine. The article was called My Dream Theater. During our correspondence, he told me about his article. I read it and I thought, of course, this theater dream must become a reality. That's been my goal all along, to support deaf-blind people in making, um, this really important kind of theater that is grounded in their everyday life experiences, in how they experience the world through touch, how they experience everything, in their aesthetics or concepts of what's beautiful. Just a kind of theater rooted in the deaf-blind way. Protactyl, the emerging language of the deaf-blind community, was an important element of the week-long institute. Protactyl was developed less than a decade ago by A.J. Granda and Yelica Nuccio. You asked me about protactile. PT for short. What's that? Well, in a nutshell, it means deaf-blind culture. Touch is very important to deaf-blind culture. Touch becomes a means for deaf-blind to be more autonomous. For example, we set up a protactile zone that is open to the deaf-blind with no barriers. Deaf-blind don't have to wait for someone sighted to come and lead us around. That's the old way. It makes us deaf-blind feel not human. Touch gives us more self-esteem. In the same way that deaf people strongly identify with ASL as their own language and cherish the visual, visual access gives deaf people the power to make decisions about their own lives. That's a deaf perspective. Hearing people strongly value oral culture, music, and so forth. In the same way, deafblind also have their culture that is grounded in touch. PT uses touch to convey visual communication information. When people nod their heads, they tap fingers on the other person. They gently scratch the other person to show when they are laughing. PT allows deafblind access to emotional registers of conversation. Spatial information can also be expressed through PT. Here, for example, Institute co-facilitator Jasper Norman describes the room layout. P. 
APT offers deafblind people a unique way to experience dramatic storytelling through direct interaction with actors. Institute co-facilitators Jasper Norman and Yashira Romulus created the first ever PT play, Gift of the Magi, in 2017. They experimented with PT storytelling and developed ways to orient deafblind actors and patrons in the performance space. For PT theater, mapping is very important. It's how we know how to move around the performance space, whether or not the room has corners. Last night's performance was a bit challenging because we didn't have corners, but we tried our best. Mapping also means using rugs on the floor to identify how to move between different rooms or spaces. Mapping is how we figure out how to get from one place to another smoothly without tripping, without the performance feeling offbeat, or without bumping into things. We want to avoid that. So mapping is an important key to the performance. The Protactile Theatre Institute built on Jasper and Yash's work using scenes from Romeo and Juliet to explore theatre practices for deafblind actors and audiences. The one-week workshop brought together PT experts, theater artists, and academics from the sighted, deaf, and deafblind communities to explore a PT adaptation of Romeo and Juliet. To structure the play, the group adopted a conveyor belt model developed by John Lee Clark. In this approach, audience members, called patrons, move through the performance individually. Each patron experiences the dramatic narrative through interactions with one or two actors. To increase the number of patrons who could experience the show, the cast included two Romeos and two Juliets. Patrons were staggered about 10 minutes apart, and the actors rotated through the performance multiple times. One of the Institute's challenges was how to adapt Shakespeare's play to a deaf-blind world. When Romeo and Juliet fall in love, seeing and sight is emphasized strongly. For example, in the play, they see each other for the first time at the Capulet party, and they can't keep their eyes off each other. The famous balcony scene is also staged as a visual encounter. The plot also relies on visual narrative to move the action forward. For example, Tybalt spots Mercutio and Benvolio in the street, and this leads to a fight. The most famous scene in Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet is probably the balcony scene. Juliet comes to the balcony and speaks aloud. Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou, Romeo? And that's a challenging part for us. First, because the idea of eavesdropping. Juliet opens up about her feelings, and she thinks she's alone. Romeo is crouched nearby, overhearing her and getting excited because he finds Juliet likes him, and then he approaches and startles her. How do you adapt that to a deafblind world? Finding tactile equivalents for these visually oriented moments was a key focus during the week. Another focus was integrating tactile elements in every part of the production, from set design to costumes. Seattle Repertory Theater generously loaned costumes that could provide tactile access to visual information about the early modern period.
The group also experimented with different ways to set up tactile cues identifying characters as belonging to the Capulet or Montague family. We recently translated that to ASL, but we should translate it to PT instead. We need to translate Romeo and Juliet's story into touch. One week was not enough time to work on translation in depth, but some basic principles were proposed. Yesterday, we realized that we should not approach this as translating from one language to another. First, we need to unpack the emotions in the lines and figure out how to express these through touch. We need to do that instead of translating from one language to another. Theater artist Rachel Grossman served as an advisor for the Institute. Her company, Dog and Pony DC, developed ways to dramatize stories through smell, taste, and touch. In the past, Dog and Pony produced several adaptations of Shakespeare's plays without two design areas, visual and auditory. We were curious about how the other senses, taste, touch, and smell, how can you tell a story with those? How can you make theater with them? The emotions provoked by food and smell can be very strong. Food and smell also inspire strong memories. Theater artists can make a sequence, an intentional sequence of sensory experiences with food, smell, and movement, which is itself a narrative journey. And the audience members' personal meanings merge with this narrative journey. Institute participants also experimented with ways to express character through scent. I think Tybalt should smell like spice. In the production, the group decided to incorporate delicate scents to identify characters, such as lavender for Juliet, so as not to overwhelm the patrons. Once rehearsal got underway, a key concern was how to choreograph the action so that it felt realistic and clear to the patron. We just discussed trying it with Jazz standing in the middle. You and I stand on each side of him and pull back and forth on his shoulders, but it's not exactly right. You want it to feel angrier, more real, like the patron is more immersed. Yeah, exactly. Let's change it so that we're pushing on the patron's hands instead of shoulders. You can feel what's happening better. One problem is that when they are fighting, the punching needs to feel more realistic, more aggressive. I need to feel it too. She needs to punch me like this, so I know what's happening. Almost so I feel pain. Right now, I don't feel that. I feel like laughing. Wow, I feel upset. 
I'm shocked that Tybalt died. I'm mad at you. And then, of course, the famous first kiss. How to convey the physical attraction, the flirting, and the complex metaphors of the dialogue through touch. Well, so far, not bad. But that kissing up the arm, that feels more like love. Not like new, they haven't met yet. As the dialogue and action took shape, the group began developing tactile cues to let the actors know when to enter and exit. During the balcony scene, the actors made use of the hollow metal railing on the patio to let the nurse know when to interrupt Juliet's clandestine meeting with Romeo. When you hit the railing, it needs to be harder so I can feel it, not so light. Set elements such as tables were positioned carefully to orient the actors in the space. The group also used rugs to set up a tactile path on the floor for the actors to follow. We just need one rug for a path, here. That's all. Every aspect of the theater experience had to be rethought. When patrons arrived, how would they be introduced to the characters and important background information? What would they do while they were waiting their turn to go through the play? How would the actors get patrons from one scene to another? We start in the lobby, where all the actors line up. The patrons will take turns meeting the actors and feeling their costume, so they can associate each character with their outfit. Then the actors will go into the party room to get ready. As a townsperson, I'll meet each patron in turn. I'll give them the background story about how two families hate each other, the star-crossed lovers, etc. But also, I'll tell them about the party happening in the Capulet house and invite them to sneak into it with me. Juliet's nurse, or nanny, became an important character for moving patrons along the story path. Patrons initially began the play with Romeo and meet Juliet with him. Romeo then leaves the patron alone with Juliet. Nurse comes to tell Juliet her mother is looking for her. This allows the actress playing Juliet to leave the patron with nurse and get into position for the next scene. Here, for example, Yash is a patron, while Lisa plays Juliet, and Vicky plays Nurse. Once Lisa leaves, Vicky gives Jazz, who is playing Romeo, the cue to enter by tapping him on his leg. Who is that woman? That one who just left? My dearest Juliet the daughter of the Capulet. I raised her from a little girl. I am her beloved nanny. Jazz then departs to get into position for the next scene, while Vicky leads the patron to Lisa to begin the balcony scene.
The nurse allowed the actors to move around in the set while ensuring patrons maintained contact with an actor at all times. This constant connection was extremely important. When we're ready to fall, you need to stay with me. That way, I can follow when you leave. Hello. My name is Robert. Come with me. I'm Tybalt. I'm Juliet's cousin. Family means everything to me. The performance opened with the prologue. Two households, both alike in dignity. In fair Verona, where we lay our scene, from ancient grudge break to new mutiny, where civil blood makes civil hands unclean. Patrons then entered the party in the Capulet House, where Romeo and Juliet meet for the first time. Good pilgrim, you do wrong your hand too much, for saints have hands that pilgrims' hands do touch, and palm to palm is holy palmer's kiss. Oh then, dear saint, let lips do what hands do, they pray. Grant thou, lest faith turn to despair. Saints do not move, though grant for prayer's sake. Thus from my lips, by yours my sin is purged. <laughs> you kiss by the book. Romeo then discovers who Juliet is. What is her mother? Her mother is the lady of the house. I nursed her daughter that you talked with all. What's he that follows here? His name is Romeo and a Montague, the only son of your great enemy. Next, came the balcony scene. O oh, Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou Romeo? Art thou not Romeo and a Montague? Romeo, doff thy name. 
Call me but love, and I'll be new baptized. Henceforth, I never will be Romeo. After making plans to elope, Romeo leaves Juliet. On his way out of the Capulet house, he meets Tybalt. Romeo, the hate I bear thee can afford no better term than this. Thou art a villain. I must away. The play ended with the patron meeting the townsmen again for the wrap-up. And Romeo slew him. And for that offense, immediately we do exile him. Who now the price of his dear blood doth owe? Go hence to have more talk of these sad things. For never was a story of more woe than this of Juliet and her Romeo. Once the show was over, the group had one last theatrical convention to rethink. How to take final bows. The solution? P.T. Bow followed by P.T. Group Hug. So, what did you think about the play? Wow. Wonderful. It was so intense. Wow, wow, I'm in shock. I really felt like I was immersed in their world. I could really feel the emotions. Just wow. It was cool. I love PT plays. I want to go all the time. I would fly to see a PT play in another state. I can't think of a good word for you. You had to have experienced it with me. It's all about PT, my deafblind culture. I need touch for everything. That one week with six deafblind people to create the story, to figure out how we could do everything ourselves without depending on sighted people or support service providers or interpreters just focusing on figuring out how to set up cues, how to make sure deafblind patrons are fully involved, how to do everything. That was really nice. I felt normal. I don't get that often out in the world, so I really appreciated that. Now that the week is over, I'm a little saddened. I feel very blessed to have been part of this team. I came here as a new PT user. I'm not skilled with tactile signing, and the PT world is new to me. When I joined this PT play, and I took on the role of nanny, I was immersed in PT, and I really embraced the PT philosophy and developed a sense of pride in my identity as a deaf-blind person. And wow, 
I felt normal. I realized that PT is the key to deafblind self-esteem. And PT theater will spread the concept of PT.